Hey, welcome back to the channel. So we're going to finish the live stream that I had started in the last video, giving you the 15 lessons I learned in my first year of business that will help you as a new life coach make your first $1,000. We're gonna finish that in today's video. Unfortunately, the live stream got cut off early, thanks YouTube. <laughs> And I don't know what the heck happened to the rest of it. So we're just going to finish it off today in this video. But again, if you have any questions or comments about anything I talked about in the last video or in this video, feel free to leave them down below in the comment section. I'm also happy to chat with you over on Instagram at the other Liz Walker if you have any additional questions that you want to ask as well. But we're going to keep the ball rolling. <laughs> So we'll finish out the 15 lessons in the last video. I ended at number five. So we'll take care of six through 15. And I will give you my three-step framework for making sure that you are making money during every cycle of your business. If you're new here, my name is Liz. I'm a business coach for black women and women of color coaches. And I help you make your first $1,000, book out your programs, and hit six figures. Let's get started. Lesson number six. Both and thinking is the key to your success. This one was a really helpful one because this really helps you to think outside of the box, especially if you're like me and you're definitely prone to overthinking, overanalyzing, you're more like logical brained, then this really helps you to do the thinking outside of the box. <laughs> Whoever even like, what, is, what does that term even mean? Who knows? But <laughs> what the simplified version of it is, is not getting stuck in black or white, either or right and wrong things thinking because when you get out of that dynamic you're able to expand your mind to the possibilities that are available to you in your business so for example when you're experimenting in your business with different touch points or with different pieces of content when you're using both and thinking you're evaluating what you're doing and then you're also seeing how you can improve it you're trying to find you know that one avenue, another way where you can do it differently or where you can approach it from a different angle just to help you try something different. And it makes the process much easier when you're not shaming yourself or thinking you're doing something wrong just because it's not working the way you had anticipated. Both and thinking will save you a lot of grief. It has definitely saved me a lot of grief and has 100% revamped my entire evaluation process for my business. Lesson number seven. Oh, and this is a good one. <laughs> Every business strategy is, is connected to a fundamental truth. This is why there are so many different paths to growing your business. So many different ways that you can earn money. Everybody's doing something a little bit differently. And everybody is doing it right. <laughs> there is no right or wrong answer here. You choose the path that feels right for you. And this also connects to the whole, you know, getting rid of the uh, either or black and white thinking. Because when you recognize that there are thousands, thousands of ways that you can make your business work for you and have it grow, then it makes the process so much easier. It makes the process so much easier. But the thing is, is that these different avenues for growth, the different ways that people want to do their business, whether they want to go strategy, whether they want to go mindset, something in between, doesn't matter. All that matters is that they're connected to a f the fundamental truths of business. And the fundamental truths of business is summed up into one statement. If you build it and share it, they will come. <laughs> so just keep that in mind. The main foundational building block of earning money in your business of making your first $1,000 is telling many people what you do and how you can help them and doing it consistently over and over and over again. <laughs> Just letting new people, more people know how you can help them and reminding them about it over and over again. That is the simplest foundational building block. Everyone needs help with something. And if you're consistent with offering your help and you do a great job helping people, then your business will grow. Like you will earn that money. It'll come to you. So remember, always be telling people what it is that you're doing and how you can help them. Always be making offers to help to new and more people. That's also a key part there. But all the strategies, 
all the different ways to get things done, whether you're on Instagram or on YouTube or on Facebook or whatever, you do emails, you do webinars, does not matter. That is the basic foundational principle right there. Tell people how you can help them. Tell, keep telling new people in some way, shape, or form <laughs> how you can help them. All right, lesson number eight. This is a good one, too. Stop gaslighting yourself. Ooh. Be honest about what you truly believe about yourself. Like This can be a tough one because sometimes we're not really honest with ourselves about what it is we feel like we can truly accomplish because we're just so used to spending our lives just thinking small and really accepting the box that society tries to put us in, especially as black women, as women of color. You know, we're shown on a constant basis, you know, what society expects us to be able to do and the limits it expects us to have. And it's not true. All of it's made up. You can do and be whatever you want, to, whatever you want. but you just gotta take your time getting there. And you'll get there, but don't try to rush yourself into, you know, changing any limiting beliefs or any um, issues or blocks that you're having overnight. Like you've been learning, you've been conditioned to participate in society as a worker bee and to do it quietly and to hide everything that you are so that you don't upset anybody. Like that's what we've been conditioned to do our entire lives. So when you're growing your business, you're literally unraveling that conditioning. Like you're literally unlearning it. And it takes time. So be gentle with yourself, be compassionate with yourself and get help too. It makes the process so much easier. All right, lesson number nine. When you know which cycle of business you're in and why, you'll finally master your marketing. Like this is what I do. I help my clients master their marketing by understanding which cycles of business they're in. Like sometimes they just don't really know. And the first foundational step is making consistent offers that you know. Like a lot of y'all are sitting on like a lot of people that want to work with you. And you just have no idea because you're just not making consistent offers. You're not making consistent offers over and over again <laughs> like when you do that you will get a baseline as to who in your audience wants to work with you right off the bat there are two seasons or cycles in business that i talk about one is the existence phase like you're literally just in existence as a business you are open to the world and you show the world that you are open by posting consistent content Lots of people don't know that you even have a business. They don't even know what you're selling. And that's because of the noise in the internet space. Like that's why it's so important to be consistent so that people know. Like a lot of times people would love to buy from you. They just have no idea what you sell. Just, just as simple as that, they have no idea. So phase one, existence phase, just keep creating consistent content. Whatever consistency means for you is that people know you are actually open for business. And then we have the experimentation and expansion phase. And in that phase, that's where you start experimenting with different touch points. That's where you start providing opportunities for the people in your audience who may potentially be interested in working with you to have that high impact, like high touch individualized interaction. And the smaller your audience is, the more impact you can have because you're more um, able to have like that one-on-one -on -one high impact, high value interaction. So take advantage of this time because this time is can be really huge for you if you really try to take a moment, get consistent, and then really start evaluating and use that information to experiment with different touch points. All right, lesson number 10. The number one way to create great content that converts is to speak your truth always. Speak your truth, lead with your truth. There's so many people out on the internet who are not speaking their truth. They are getting burnt out by their content because they're just copying what they saw someone else do. Like, I, you see it everywhere. You see it on YouTube, you see it on Instagram, you see it everywhere. People really want their businesses to work so badly, so they just copy what they see other people doing, and they don't stop to think, is this really what I want to do? Like, is this really how I want to share this information? And when you're not speaking your truth, that takes brain power, that takes energy, hindering yourself from doing what it is that you wanna do how you want to do it. But the moment that you decide to start speaking your truth and really start sharing like your real thoughts and your real ideas and your real feelings, 
your people will find you even faster because it'll make you so much more relatable. It'll help build that trust so much faster. Like it will just make the process so much easier for you because your truth will always just come naturally. So lead with your truth, speak it always. That is how you know your content is awesome. Like when you can look, look back on a post that you did or a video that you created and you're just like, you know, damn, I put my foot in that piece of content. <laughs> That's how you know that it is great content that is helping someone that converts, okay? So remember, speak your truth, especially in this internet space. Lesson number 11, experimenting in business is more than just creating different pieces of content. And if you haven't watched part one of this video, I highly recommend checking that out because I touched upon it a bit in there too, if that part didn't get cut out. But okay. um, when I first started out in my business, I really thought that experimenting was just talking about different things in every single piece of content. And experimenting is so much more than that. It is so much more than that. It's really experimenting with things outside of just posting content. It's experimenting with not just how you interact with people in your audience and your community, but also experimenting with how you do things on your back end and like making the process easier and smoother for you. When I first started creating YouTube content, it literally would take me hours to edit my videos. And I was still just doing talking head videos just like this. It would take me hours. Now I have it down to 30 minutes or less. Like every single piece of content I do takes me 30 minutes or less to create. That's it. Because I took the time to create processes, workflows, things that work for me. I paid attention to the moments when I felt inspired and took notes, wrote, wrote things down, took notes on my phone, like anything to make the process easier and simpler. So remember, experimentation goes beyond writing about different topics in your content. Lesson number 12, we're almost there. Your marketing will never be perfect. <laughs> And this one is, I feel, is super helpful, especially when you're just starting out and really trying to earn your first dollars, because there's so much, there's so much messaging out there on the internet about your messaging, like so much messaging about your messaging. I had a client once who was doing great, like she was um, following through on her launch, creating her content, really loving the process. And then she saw one Instagram post by another business coach that said, if you're not making money in your business, it's because your messaging is wrong. And that is just really one of the insidious, like one of the examples of the insidious ways that people market by just jabbing at your touch, at your vulnerability, at your pain points with a knife and twisting it. It's, it's not helpful. Who does that really serve? Like it doesn't serve anyone. Like I've never bought anything or purchased a course or participated in a coaching program from a place of extreme pain and discomfort. Like never. Like I've always done it from a place of like hope and possibility and certainty. But if you're targeting someone's pain points to the point where they're shutting down, like who does that serve? It certainly doesn't serve you as a business owner because it's going to shut them down and then they're going to need time to process before they can get back up and then figure out what it is they want to do next. So anytime you see something online that is extremely triggering about what you're doing wrong in your business, really take a second to remind yourself that that's what they wanted. They wanted me to feel this way. And then ask yourself, well, if they wanted me to feel this way, why would I want to work with them? So you don't have to do that either. And the one thing I love about this sort of new generation of coaches is that we're kind of sick of the bullshit. We see it and we're not trying to duplicate this crap. The more that we can improve just the coaching industry to get as together, like making it more transparent, making it, you know, less, <laughs> the word I'm thinking of is diabolical, but you know, just less gross, less icky, the more people will want to get started, who will want to build businesses and help people and make a lot of friggin' money doing it. So definitely, you know, <laughs> wait, what was the lesson? I already forgot. Let me see. Um, oh, it's <laughs> your marketing will never be perfect. I probably won't edit that out because like, who cares? This is informal. We're just kicking it. We're just kicking it. Um, your marketing will never be perfect. So, and the good thing is, and the great thing is, is that it's not about your messaging. <laughs> like it's maybe like 
2% your messaging and 98% like your consistency and putting out offers because there's again so much noise out there on the internet like you people are going to forget most of what you said as soon as they click off your posts like fine tuning the exact words that you say is not important <laughs> it's not important if you when you're writing you know do your best to provide as much value as possible you know even if it's how to's or telling stories from your own past experiences like make sure that you're doing your best to help someone to serve someone in that post in that piece of content but your messaging does not have to be perfect because there's no such thing as perfect messaging and at the end of the day you're gonna convert like two percent of your audience like that's that's the standard across the board it doesn't matter who you're following that you're just like, oh my God, they are the best of the best at business. I guarantee you, if you look at their numbers, they're only converting 2% of their audience. Maybe a little bit more. But at the end of the day, it's not a big difference. And you know what? Those 2%, like the 2% of people who will want to work with you, like they love you. <laughs> like you, you could crap rainbow sprinkles and it does not matter. They want to work with you. So just be yourself and do your best to just serve as much as you can. And don't stress out about if you're saying the exact right thing that people need to hear. Like even the top millionaires have no idea what exactly they need to say that will make people buy. It's, it's not a real concept. It's, it's one of those fake little black holes of those black hole concepts that are there to kind of trick you into thinking that you always need somebody else's help. Don't fall for it. <laughs> Do not fall for it. Lesson number 13. <laughs> you don't have to convince anyone to work with you. Your people will convince themselves. And this is in connection to the previous lesson where the 2% of people who are for you like they are for you regardless. Like you don't have to convince them to work with you. You just, all you have to do is just offer your help. That's it. Just offer your help. You don't have to convince them to do anything. And as a matter of fact, it's impossible for you to convince them. Convincing them will always come off sleazy. Always. Always. It'll always come off sleazy. The only people who can convince, who can convince anyone to work with you are the people themselves. Or... They're friends. So like when you're creating your high impact touch points and you're delivering value to people and they love what you're doing and they love how you're helping them, they're going to tell other people about how much you help them. And then they, from a place of clean energy, <laughs> will convince someone else to work with you or they'll convince themselves to work with you. But you can't be the one doing the convincing. It's not how it works. So don't even bother. Just let the 2% come to you. Let it come to you. All right. Lesson number 14. The numbers low key matter. <laughs> Speaking again of that 2%, if you're just growing and just starting out in your business and your numbers are very small, you can still certainly make a lot of money. Like, that is certainly the case. You don't need tens of thousands of subscribers or followers to be able to earn money. Like, people will come to you from all sorts of different places and you just have no idea where. But the larger your audience, the easier it is to make money. Now, depending on what it is that you're offering, if you're offering like coaching or consulting services, and you're offering high ticket, that is not a problem at all because literally just a handful of people can help you hit your income goals very quickly. But if you're trying to do a business like you know passive income, um, low ticket courses, things like that, it's gonna take a while. So you really have to ask yourself, you know, the 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 upfront work is gonna be the same either way. You just have to really be behind have your own back with what it is that you want to provide to the world and how much you want to charge for it. You just have to be 100% comfortable around it. And when you get started, say you start on the low end of things, but then you start realizing, you know, this isn't feeling too good. This doesn't feel like an equal energy exchange. You can always change after. So just keep that in mind. Pay attention to the numbers. They aren't everything, but you can't ignore them when you're trying to grow your business and you're trying to earn money. 
And the last lesson, lesson number 15, your business requires balance. This is a big one. And when I say balance, I'm talking about strategy and mindset. You need both. And it's kind of like a what came first, the chicken or the egg situation. You need, they're intertwined. You need them both. Your business will not grow. You won't, won't earn your first $1,000 if you're not taking action. But if you're taking action while you're spinning out in your brain or while you're not believing in yourself, it's going to alter your action. So if you're doing something without confidence, then that will show. It'll show. I mean, that's just biology. It's just psychology. It's how, you know, humans operate. And if you're not sharing what you can offer to the world with confidence, there's usually a reason behind it. And you can always unpack it because who doesn't want to run their business with confidence, especially if it's a business that you know is going to earn you hundreds of thousands of dollars, then, you know, why not show up with confidence? What is, you know, get to the root of the matter of what the issue is. But you also can have all the confidence in the world, but if you're not posting consistently or enough for people to see, like think, make, figure out how you're going to make your first 100 offers, like make that your baseline and whether your plan is to do it over the next six months or the next year, doesn't matter, but let that be your baseline. Just know that you have to start building consistency and start developing that habit. And that requires action. Thinking, start thinking about how you want to experiment with high value touch points. That requires action. Like figure out how you can talk more with your audience, with your community to figure out how you can serve them better. That requires action. So the bo they both go hand in hand. You cannot have one without the other. So those were the 15 lessons that I learned from my first year in business that helped me make my first thousands of dollars, have helped my clients book out their programs. Like these lessons have impacted me in a major, major way, and I know they will help you. So without further ado, let's get into the three-step framework that I have that I'm going to share with you right now for how you can make sure that you earn your first $1,000 as a new coach. Step one, a lot of this is going to sound familiar, <laughs> post content with offers consistently consistently like right off the bat start planning out your one your 100 pieces of content map out your timelines make sure it's sustainable but start posting content with offers on a consistent basis that is your open sign you know how a pizza shop will have a we're open sign and that's how you know you can go in and order a slice of pizza like having recent content is your open sign for your business especially since you're operating online so make sure that in step number one you are posting consistently with offers always with an offer because people will forget what it is that you do. They don't see 100% of the content that you create. They see lots of other content as well. So make sure that you're always, always, always reminding them how they can work with you and why they should work with you. All right, number two, experiment with high value touch points. Again, you don't have to do this every single month, but I recommend at least every other month. Think of creative ways that you can interact with your audience, with your community, how you can serve them on a deeper level. When you're just starting out in your business, you can take advantage of really having high impact, individualized touch points with people. The first things that you're gonna wanna start doing are your market research. Start talking to people to figure out what it is they need help with. Start to start figuring out you know, how you can serve them and why would it is that you do is better than what anybody else does. What's your secret sauce? You want to make sure that you're doing this on a regular basis and then step three, evaluating. Evaluating what it is that you're doing, but doing it from a place without shame, doing it from a place that is not either or right or wrong thinking, but from a place of openness and expansiveness. So you can get even more creative about different avenues and that you want to try and different things that different ways that you can serve your people. So those are the three steps. One, make sure that you are posting content with offers consistently. Number two, make sure you are taking the time to experiment 
with high value touch points. This can be things like, um, like I had mentioned market research. This can be things like offering free coaching. This can be things like um, doing challenges, doing webinars or trainings. Like the, the list is, the, the opportunities are endless, but it really is a time for you to see, okay, who in your audience, who in your community really looks to you for guidance and support. And you get to see what it is that they need help with because the things that they need help with that they are so very brave enough to ask you for help with, there are so many other silent supporters who need help with the same thing and they are just literally terrified, terrified to talk to you or ask you a question. So always be sharing what you're helping someone else do because it will always help someone else who's too afraid to speak up. And number three, evaluate what you're doing from a clean place. Evaluating from a place of both and, from openness, from expansion, from excitement, from possibility. Because you can always serve more deeply, better. You can always do it in a way that is filled with more ease for you. All right, those are the three, the three-step framework that I use that has helped me make money, that has helped my clients make money, that'll help you make money. If you have questions about any of this, definitely let me know in the comments below. Again, feel free to shoot me a DM on Instagram too at the other Liz Walker. If you have any other questions, the link for my IG handle is also in the description box below. And if you know that you need help bringing those these three step this three three step framework into your business into your strategies if you know that you need help with your mindset work if you want to start earning your first one thousand dollars and start booking out your programs and you're struggling to do so i can help you in the link in the description in the description box below is a link to book an interest call for my one-on-one -on -one coaching program and i'd be delighted to serve you all right with that said Thank you so very much. I can't believe that it's already been one year in business for me already. It's been insane. I feel like I've lived like three lifetimes. It's crazy. But I know that everything that I've absorbed and that I've learned will definitely help so many other people. And so I'm so happy that I get to share this with you from a place of just transparency and just understanding that literally anyone can do this. Like, businesses existed before capitalism like the this is our baseline it's so it, it's so, it can be so simple the unlearning can be tough unlearning just being a worker bee being in this system and being in that nine to five world and ex be and sharing your truth online like it's a lot to unlearn there's a lot that you sometimes need to unpack but it's worth it. At the end of the day, it's so truly worth it to have freedom over your time and over your finances. Like this is exactly what our communities need. And I'm so, so, so happy and delighted that I can pass on everything that I've learned to help you. All right. Until next time. Bye.